welcome, welcome to this get ready with me with this little sewage rat. <laughs> I just stepped out of the shower. Um, I haven't done anything. What am I gonna... Ugh. Let's just try and... Wow, Angie, you're so sexy. <laughs> I am gonna do a get ready with me. I have some things that I, ooh, that I wanna discuss, like I have some things I want to talk about and I also have some things that I want to try because I just got this one in the mail the poison garden by Nabla so well I bought it that's also something we are gonna discuss <laughs> and I wanted to try that one I also have a foundation sample that I'm very interested in trying I uh, did get a sample of a foundation that I've been really intrigued by uh, I'm actually gonna start out with some I got a sample of the how's my How's my skin looking? Because I have some hormonal breakouts. See this? And also my shin is not looking that... I don't know if I'm still too light or if this is good. I'm trying to fix my settings um, with this new lens. Because I put the f-stop to the minimum, which is 1.8. Um, ah! And then I wanted to fix like so it's not too light and not too dark. So I've been trying some different things. Ow! Why are you climbing on me with your claws. You can be here if you want to. Do you want to come and sleep here? You want to come and nap? She's just looking at me like, bitch, no. Uh, this is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream Greenland First Ascent. Ascent? I have no idea. This is an hydrating thing. And I got this today in an order that I got uh, from Kix. Uh, did I even open this correctly? I don't think so. How can you, how can you, how do you mess up opening a sample? Like, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Okay, let me probably open this. What are you doing, sweetie? She is a menace and now you get to be with me. Okay, can you be here? Can you be calm and nice and cuddly? Maybe. Okay, so I have been really dry, so I wanted to take some facial cream before I um, get on with the show, so to speak. Oh, there's a lot in this sample. That's really hot. I don't really like... Okay, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with me. I think it's the old, like, old lady syndrome, but I don't like uh, skincare that doesn't smell like anything. And this just smells like ingredients, and I'm just like, I want it to smell fancy. I want fancy skincare that smells fancy. I'm just gonna let that sink in for just a couple of minutes, and then I'll put the primer on as well. I'm just gonna put a bit of pore filming primer since I'm having a bit of a situation here with my skin since it's that time of the month. Okay, I will say my skin does feel very hydrated, so that's nice. I'm gonna use a bit of the so hairs everywhere, a bit of professional. I'm still trying this one out. I think it's nice. I don't know if it's like worth the high-end price tag, but I do think it's nice. So I wanted to talk about like two things in this little get ready with me and I'm gonna talk about that while I do my makeup and I don't think I will be talking that much about like what I'm doing and I hope that that's fine. So this is going to be a bit of a first impression of the Nabla palette, but I am going to come back and let you know more about how I feel about it, I promise. And the foundation that I got a sample of is the, the um, Estee Lauder Double Wear Water Light something, you know, the light version. I will put it down below and I will also put what shade they gave me. And she gave, it's very runny and she gave me enough to wear for one time. At least she said so. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if she's correct. Ooh, this is runny. Oh, this is a mess. And this little jar, how, what am I supposed to do with this little jar? Like, it's in here. Am I supposed to dip my finger in? Oh, wow, this is... This is weird. So, I wanted to talk about... Because, like, I feel like I'm going full circle. 
a long time ago, I would say it's like two years ago, I did a video saying like five reasons why I can't trust beauty gurus or something like that. I don't exactly remember what. And I actually, that is my most watched video on my channel to this day. This is so messy. I honestly do not know what to do with this. <sighs> and that is like I said, that is my most watched video and I wanted, I wanted to watch it again to see like if I still, let me zoom in a bit, if I still uh, agree with what I said when I uh, filmed that video. Because it's, sometimes you can like agree with yourself and you look at it, because sometimes you can film something and you're like so sure of yourself and then when time passes you're like, actually, <laughs> and you change your mind and that's perfectly fine. But I watched the video again, this is a really nice color match and this looks Beautiful. I think it took too much though. It's not that easy when it's in the yard like that. I watched the video again and I have to say I still agree with myself. One of them was like stop giving um, personal opinions as advice. Like stop saying that shimmers doesn't work in the crease or that bronzers has to be cool tone and matte and stuff like that. That is literally just personal preference and people are handing them out like they're the gospel truth. And that is just not true at all. I also was talking about uh, how I don't like that sometimes it feels like a beauty YouTuber wouldn't make a video unless they knew they could monetize of it. And I'm not saying like ads because I totally think that ads is like such a good idea. It enables a YouTuber to get some of the money back that they invested in the channel, get it back as AdSense. I'm saying like sometimes I feel like some YouTubers would never make a video about something unless unless they are sponsored or had a code or in some way could benefit from it um, and I am all for codes I'm all for affiliate links I'm all for all of that I mean I have that same here it is a great way to get some money back that you invested in your channel it is not affordable like to review a lot of makeup for YouTube and to buy lights and stuff like that although what I feel is that sometimes I feel it's like overboard I feel like sometimes people avoid reviewing things that they can't make money off. And another point was that I felt like some some people maybe didn't... How do I feel about this? It's kind of pretty. It's very like light coverage. I feel like some YouTubers don't invest back in their channels. They don't buy any new equipment and they don't buy any makeup. And that makes me wonder, like, don't you want your channel to be better? I mean, I'm not saying that all the money you make out of YouTube should go back into the channel, because for some people this is their job. I mean, but I'd like to reinvest just a little bit. But there are YouTubers out there that are doing it, and I feel like after watching that video, I have been getting a better understanding of the mid-range YouTuber, like the ones that are like, I would say like 100k to a million, how how they are running their channels and I feel like within that segment you can find all like all kinds of YouTubers, you can find the ones that are still considered small YouTubers because of how they act. You can find people that are solely dependent on PR and never buy any makeup. You can find the ones that don't receive any makeup and that buy all their makeup. You can find people that have affiliate codes and affiliate links for absolutely everything that they talk about on their channel and you can find people that have none of it. And I'm not saying that I think that this is bad because obviously I am a YouTuber that has affiliate links and I am a YouTuber that has affiliate codes and I actually think that that is a good thing. I don't think that that is a bad thing, but I do think that maybe we should be careful so we don't have it on everything because that makes me as a viewer feel like if you weren't able to make money out of a product, would you review it? Would you consider making a video on it? Um, and that's just what I was asking myself in that video. I am making this way too long, way too long. I got some Coke Zero. <laughs> and I was also talking about PR hauls. Um, and I do think that it is very helpful when people are showing their PR on video. I love that. Uh, but I don't love when they're just showing it to show it, like just unpacking it. That doesn't tell me anything. I want to know like more. 
I want to know more about the PR, I want to see more about it. So I, I still don't like PR hauls, although I don't mind uh, hauls that include both things you bought and PR things or videos about things you received in PR if you're actually like demoing it. Like a get ready with me or a demo or a swatch party or whatever it might be. But the thing that got me giggling is that I watched this video a couple of days ago. I watched this video a couple of days ago and in the video, I my first point is, and I don't remember if I missed something, I don't remember if I missed something. My first point is that I hate when YouTubers are promoting products that are just straight up bullshit. Uh, one of them being uh, skinny teas, or as I'd like to call them, diarrhea teas. Um, and I was saying in that video, and I still 100% stand by this, this is so light, that I should really move this one. Why is it so far away? What was I thinking putting it over here? I have, I have, a, I have a problem. <laughs> mm. I was saying in that video, see if I can move my mirror, that's what I'm trying to do if you're wondering. <laughs> I was saying in that video that you can see my mirror a bit, maybe you can live with that. You're gonna have to live with that. I was saying in that video that I felt like people promoting those kind of products, you could definitely see that they were in it for the money because they didn't properly research um, how how these things actually affect your body. Skinny teas, waist trainers, like all of these absolutely horrible things that are actually not even... I mean, how, how did they become part of the beauty community? I, I, I get it, people want to be pretty and people want to find shortcuts for like looking perfect, I guess, but diarrhea teas uh, often include ingredients that make you poop a lot and when you poop a lot you will lose uh, a lot of weight and also you will lose a lot of water but as soon as you stop with the tea the body will want to get that water back because you are dehydrated that's why skinny teas doesn't really work unless you are trying to feel awful for a couple of days because you want to get into a dress two days later. You won't really feel that good wearing the dress, but yeah. For that purpose, maybe it could be something. But I honestly, I don't, I don't recommend that in any way, shape or form. And also, I touched on this in the video, um, those kind of skinny tees are not, um, they're not legal here because you are not allowed to sell um, those kind of like senna for example a lot of skinny teas has senna in them and you are not allowed to sell senna for weight loss in the eu and senna is available here but you you'll find it in medication before constipation and you are allowed to sell senna for that but you are not allowed to sell senna for weight loss and you can see like finding senna in constipation medication and also in weight loss medication i mean you see where I'm going with this, like, how this is problematic, I'm hoping. <laughs> I hope you see wh why that is a bit problematic. I'm gonna use the Bourgeois uh, Sun Illusion in Fair. I am not fair, but I am pretty light right now, and this is pretty orange. So, I'm just gonna warm up my skin a little bit with this. I mean, it's like a putty. It's like a, a, like a very runny putty. It's like a chocolate mousse, but like a maybe caramel mousse <laughs> okay so i still think that skinny teas are absolutely awful and i still unfollow beauty people on instagram or on youtube that i see promote those because i feel like they are promoting something that is not healthy and that they are more concerned about getting their paycheck than being a good role model and I th I'm not trying to be a good role model but at the same time I'm not trying to be a bad one and I think that everybody like can make mistakes and stuff like that but I feel like it would just take you a simple google search about skinny tees for you to realize that that is that is not something that you should be promoting and that is that is my I that is that is what I how I feel about them I, I actually think that that is a shitty business shitty business <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, I really came full circle because I actually got a mail from one of those skinny tea companies today. I have gotten um, 
some like not like a skinny tea company but something similar and they wrote me today and what was hilarious was that they wrote me we have watched your channel and we love it and i just wanted to answer back no you haven't you liar <laughs> you liar you um because if they actually had watched my channel like look at me if i was running a company and i wanted a youtuber to promote my product why am i getting hair everywhere i would a um, check up on the YouTuber so that they have the audience that I'm trying to reach. And maybe I do have the audience that they're trying to reach because I have mostly women and mostly women in their 20s, 30s and 40s. And maybe that is the audience that they're trying to reach. And then I would make sure that the person, like the influencer, is someone whose values mix with the values of the company. And how do you know that? I mean, I have 600 videos on YouTube. You can't watch all of them. That would be impossible. But you can watch the most popular ones. If And if they would have watched my most popular one, Within a couple of minutes in that video, they would have seen that I think that skinny teas is a scam. And that's what I mean with, it just makes them look, I have been bronzing for forever, but I really love this product. <laughs> See, this is how long face makeup takes me. This is why I never do face makeup. It takes me forever. I'm just saying that it's like, just why, why are you contacting me? I'm not, I'm not gonna do any skinny teas. First of all, I'm not an idiot. And second of all, I'm already thin. Like, I'm not skinny, but I'm not trying to lose weight here. I am definitely a small. Like, I am a size small. Um, I am definitely not in need of losing any kind of weight. And uh, why are you contacting me? I'm not, the, I'm not the target audience. I don't want to lose weight and I definitely do not want to have diarrhea for a couple of days. Uh, even if I get it for free. Even if you pay me, you're like, you're paying me to have diarrhea for a couple of days. That's like the worst business model ever. Ugh. Anyways, I, I, didn't, I don't even respond to people. Like when they ask me about stupid things, especially when they say we've been watching your channel because they're, they're lying. <laughs> They haven't, uh, and I, I just, I can't, I can't. Let me put some powder on this, this little mug. I get a lot of like really questionable, 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 like questions for sponsorships. I would say that I get about maybe two to three emails a week asking if I want to do a sponsored video. And normally, 90% of the time, the companies have nothing to do with makeup. And I'm just like, aren't there channels out there that are better for you than me? Because why would I start talking about I don't know, why would I start talking about nail art supplies? That is one that I've been, like, I've been asked. Why would I start talking about nail art supplies? I've never talked about nail art. I don't even talk about nail polish. Why would I all of a sudden be super interested in a nail art thing? Um, snack box tryings, that all actually could be pretty fun. That could be a fun video, but I haven't accepted yet. Like teeth bleaching oh my god like two a month two a month um extensions um like weird tools for your face jewelry i even got a question from a lady wanting me to try out uh prom dresses like not even prom dresses it was prom dress one dress i'm like she wanted me to do a video trying on her dress and reviewing up I, I don't even i don't even do like things like that on my channel why why would i want to do that i don't understand how they think that this channel is is the right fit sometimes i get so confused with who they ask for sponsorships um so confused. Let me fix my eyebrows and I'll be back and we can do the rest of the face and the eyeshadow and all that. So one sec. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. I'm gonna use the butter bronzer. I have mine in bronzer. 
ugh, I just, I just don't like the smell of this. I also wanted to mention, I forgot to mention, I get so, so, so many me emails about about uh, doing sponsored posts and sponsored videos about apps. Um, and I don't know if this is common, but I get so much about that. And I just don't understand where that is coming from because wh why would I do a video about that? That makes, I mean, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why would I make a video about an app? And it can be anything from editing apps to games to like, I even get questions about doing videos about like tech things. Like I got about like headphones. I was like, where am I going with these headphones? Why? Did, why? <laughs> I, I honestly don't understand what's going on when I get mails like that because what am, what am I doing with those kind of things? And I, I, I get why some people take those. And I, ta I, touched about, I touched on this in another video, like that I feel that if you as an influencer or YouTuber or whatever you want to call it, if you are putting yourself in a situation financially where AdSense by itself doesn't cover your living expenses and you have to do sponsored posts to survive and pay your bills and get food and all of that i think that you made a mistake because when you are re relying on like getting sponsored videos you have to pick ones that you don't really believe in and that don't fit you just to be able to pay the bills and that is the kind of sponsorships that i don't approve of uh, i'm gonna use i haven't used this in so long so i thought i'd pick this out because i wanted to use this this is the sigma chroma glow i'm gonna use lush on my cheeks and then I'm going to use a bedazzle on my cheekbone and I just I feel like I oh this is so pretty I feel like I see that a lot like people that obviously got a sponsorship that was made a lot of money and they took it even though it's something that they have never touched on before like a video game or a editing app or something that just doesn't fit their channel and yet here they are and I'm just like like I get it like money has to come in and you have to pay the bills but when they do sponsorships like that and then I see them do sponsorships with like makeup brands it makes me feel like were you as picky with this because I feel like if you're a beauty channel you should be picky about what beauty products you are recommending because that is what your channel is about. And when you're taking a sponsorship for a beauty product, I really hope that people are super picky about that so that they don't pick whatever sponsorship comes their way and products that they actually do not believe in. Um, and when I see them take sponsorships of things that are like well, if they took the headphones, for example, I, I'm, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be more, I don't know. I'm just going to question <laughs> the other sponsorships a bit. Maybe I'm harsh. Maybe I haven't been in the YouTube game long enough to be able to see the difference. And also, since I am not like relying on this being an income, maybe I don't understand how things can play out in real life. And I'm totally like oops holding a door open for that that i might not have all the answers like i not maybe i don't understand all of the things and i totally totally get that and i totally respect that this is the rose glow mist by pixie i did order this one because i've been really into rose sprays and i love the glow spray by pixie so i thought that this one could be really good and i've been really using the glow spray i think i'm like half done which i think is actually really good and i've been into sprays a bit lately as well because i've been piling on so much powder on my face so it's really nice to have a spray to just get it to melt back into your skin this smells so nice oh this smells so nice and it looks good as well. Okay, so far, I'm really liking that one. Okay, let's get into the Nabla one. And I want to have something on my lips, though. I want to fix that first. 
What do I want to have on my lips? You know what I want to have? I know what I want to have. One sec. Oh my god, I remember loving these sat- This is a velvet lipstick. Velvet liquid lipstick by Kylie Jenner and this Kylie Cosmetics and this is in birthday suit which is like a yellowy nude. This is from her summer collection last year and this color is so nice. I don't know if she has it still. Oh my god, has anyone ever overlined the lips more than I just overlined my lips? I don't think so. I think I won some kind of award. So here is the Nabla Poison Garden and I have to say, this is a bit weird. I got this today. That, well, I got it yesterday. Ah, why am I not getting this out? Okay, the cover and the palette don't look the same. This is more of a greenish red black and this is more of a blue, like pink, purple, orange. This one doesn't have any green on it. This one really represents the palette. It's like blues and purples and pinks and oranges and blacks. This one doesn't have any green, but this one has green. I think the poison garden thing is maybe that things are like poisonous and I don't... I, I, this palette really does represent the inside, which is... Wait, let me take the plastic out. Which is like this. This is what the inside looks like. And they are really like representing each other, at least I think so. And I think that this actually looks really pretty. I want to do something. I saw uh, Anya, I will link her down below, do a beautiful look with like a periwinkle inner corner. So I want to do something like that. I need to get my eye pen stick for that. I'm so intrigued to do something like that. I will leave the video down below where she had that, where I was so inspired. Such a like she always has such beautiful eye colors. Let me find my eyeshadow stick so I can do that as well And I'm gonna do something fun with this palette But yeah, I don't understand why this has green on it when the other one doesn't because I mean yeah This palette would have benefited from a green, but I'm not mad at the color scheme. It's really pretty I haven't even touched this palette yet. So I'm so excited to touch it. Okay, so here we are I brought the Kiko Milano eyeshadow stick in 31 which is like a light periwinkle. I'm gonna use this uh, in a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna use that in a bit. So I think that when I want, what I wanna play with is the two berries and maybe the blue and then this dual chrome here. I am gonna do more looks with this palette. Um, I am gonna do more looks with this palette. There's so many things here. I don't even understand how things get this messy. Okay, so I'm just gonna dig into the colors and I'm gonna talk a bit while I do this. So, ooh, another thing that I got to think about uh, when I got this palette, ooh, is the fact that a while ago when I was, I don't really remember how many subscribers I had, but it was like, maybe, 20, 30,000? It was this year, but it was the beginning of the year. Because uh, I hit 20,000 just before New Year's um, 2017. I was talking with a friend of mine that's uh, also running a YouTube channel, and we were talking a bit about PR and how you get PR and who you get PR from and who you would like to get PR from. And there is a lot of brands that I enjoy buying stuff from but I don't necessarily want to receive PR from them because I feel like maybe they like maybe they put out too many things and I would feel stressed if I would receive that much PR. Uh, and we were discussing like so what brands would be like to receive PR from and I mentioned three brands, three brands that I wanted to receive PR from. And she was like, "Why don't you contact them and tell them that uh, you are interested in receiving PR from them and that you would really uh, like to just showcase their brand on your channel. I was like, I, I was, I'm gonna use a bit of the bone colored shade, just blending the edge. And I was like, I don't know if that's really for me. I don't know if I'm the person who does that. And she was like, you can be the person who does that. Um, so I wrote a mail to these three companies basically saying, I am a big fan of your makeup and this is my YouTube channel. Um, if you would consider putting me on your PR list or if you have a spot on your PR list, I will be most grateful because I really do like your brand and uh, I would love to showcase it more. And there were three brands and 
I thought at that time that these three brands were doing such a good job and that I really wanted, like, these were brands that I wanted to showcase more and also three brands that I felt didn't get the recognition that I felt like maybe they deserved. Um, and all three brands wrote back to me saying no. And I'm not salty about that. Like, listen, I'm not salty about that. This is this is just me telling this is me telling a story. This is story time, Angie. The thing is with PR that any brand at any point can decide that you are a good or a bad match for their brand. And I am very sometimes salty on my channel, and I would never, never ever like fault a brand for not wanting to be on my channel. I totally get that. I mean, I tell you when I love something and I tell you when I don't love something. There, That's just how I run it and I totally understand if a brand doesn't want to take the chance with me, so to speak. Or maybe they don't think that I'm a good fit uh, anyways. Maybe I don't have the demographic that they are looking for. Maybe I don't have the views that they are looking for. Maybe I don't have the kind of quality that they are looking for. There are so many things that could be the reason for a brand saying no to uh, giving out PR. It, it can be anything and I would never be salty about that because I feel the same way about why I feature brands on my channel and not because sometimes I feel like they're a good match and sometimes I feel like they're not and it's just it's, it's nothing it's nothing to like be upset about because I'm not upset about that and I'm pretty sure that if you are upset about that you, you should really take a, a, a minute to think about why you would be upset about something like that because a brand is not obliged to send you anything or to do anything for you regardless of you feeling that they should. So that is that is not the point. Uh, all three brands wrote back to me saying uh, our uh, PR is full, like our list is full, thank you for getting in touch with us. Uh, and the three brands were a Sueva, Makeup Geek and Nabla. That's why like, I'm using the Nabla palette today that I obviously bought, bought myself. And all three of these brands I have still bought from after that. Pretty sure I bought something from Makeup Geek this year as well. Pretty sure I bought that beautiful green voodoo pigment that is absolutely beautiful. That I should use someday. That is so beautiful. This is this is pretty. I don't know if this was the right brush. I think that I needed something that was a bit more precise. I'm gonna use the darker color now. But I just feel like those are brands that I don't feel get enough attention on YouTube. And I could be like amongst the people I watch, which doesn't really say a lot because you can't watch everyone on YouTube. That's just that's just natural. You can't watch everyone on YouTube. Just nothing wrong with that. And even though they think that I wasn't a good match for them, I'm still gonna buy their products because I got in touch with them because I was interested in their products. I would never be like hurt over the fact that they thought that other people are a better match for their brand than I am. There is no shame in buying them yourself, basically. But it is easier to make like um, comparing stuff when you have full collections and you can actually swatch everything and just like give some kind of advice about collections before they launch. That is like I think the best part about PR when people make videos about things they get in PR either before they're being released or just as they're being released so that I can see if this is something that I want to <laughs> spend my money on or not. I see, I see hair. <sighs> that, is, that is how I love when PR is being used. And I don't, I don't know anyone who gets PR from Sueva and makes videos about it. Do you know that? Because I would love to see how they, like, right? Recently they've done so much neutral things, but that could change at any point, to be honest. And I like their quality and I like that they're, European, but I just never see them on YouTube and I think it's such a shame. Do you know anyone who receives PR from them? Because I would love to find more English speaking people to get PR from them. I have found some people that uh, actually do get PR from Nabla and do videos about them um, in English, which is amazing. Because first I only found Italian ones. I'm like, that's great, you're Italian, but I mean, <laughs> the 
the brand all for instance all of the names in this palette is in English the name of the palette is in English and still I had a really hard time finding someone that spoke English that did anything with this palette before it was released and I think that that is a shame because if they want to be international which they obviously want to be I mean they have to make the palette available for international viewers so that we can see things about the palette before we buy it. But I did find someone who did a very good video about it uh, before it was released and then based on that video I decided that I wanted to pick it up. But can you let me know, like, down below, if you could receive PR from any company, like anyone at all, like, imagine that you are uh, like a YouTuber, imagine that you are a YouTuber and that you could receive PR, what brand would you want to receive PR from if you could pick any brand? I still think that I would like pick Nabla to be honest. Because I think that Nabla has really great quality and I wasn't like I love the Nabla singles and I wasn't super impressed with uh, the shimmers in the first palette and I actually even didn't buy the second palette because I thought it was so similar to the first one but I do really like Nabla as a brand and I am really impressed with what they're doing and I still think that that would be my one but I still have no problem buying stuff from them when I want to receive it like when I want to own it like I bought this one at release and I'm so excited to have it and I'm so excited to make videos on it I'm gonna take a bit of that berry bite. I'm just gonna put that here. I think the whole PR thing is so interesting because I feel like a lot of people get very like defensive when you talk about PR, about why it should exist or why it shouldn't, why it's bad, why it's good. And I just feel like people are taking PR like out of context and just giving it more value than it actually has. Like yeah, it's awesome if the brand thinks that I am a good fit for the brand and they want to send me the things in advance so that I can try them before they bring a release or that the brand thinks that I am a good spokesperson for the brand and that they trust my like my artistry enough to want me to have their product without having to pay for them. Because, like I said, like reviewing things for a YouTube channel is um, expensive because you have to buy all of the things. At least I have. <laughs> Pretty much everything I have to buy myself. And I think that PR is great then because it enables your favorite YouTubers to be able to do even more videos without having to go like bankrupt over it, which is, I mean, a good thing. But then there is the problem with the really big YouTubers getting PR from every brand because everyone wants to be everyone wants to be the brand that they showcase. And I mean, if you get like 20 packages a, a day, I mean, there's no way that you're going to be able to showcase all of that. I mean, we all know that and I wouldn't want that. And I'm not saying like I'm not overflowing with <laughs> with um uh, PR here, but I would be able to receive a lot more PR if I had a PO box because I do say no to a lot of things because I I just don't want I don't want it to clutter my life with a lot of things that I just can't own. The sheer joy of getting something for free doesn't like take away from the horror of having to find a space for all of that. My apartment isn't that big. <laughs> So I don't want that. I don't want that at all, to be honest. And I also like that experience of me getting like rejected. Oh, should I name the video that? Me being rejected. <laughs> but that made me realize that, you know what? If the brands like me, they will come to me and they will reach out to me if they feel like I am a good fit for the brand. And I don't have any problem buying things with my own money, I was gonna say. Uh, but with like AdSense money or my own money, to be honest as well, because I've spent a lot of my own money on this channel because I love makeup and I wanna own it and I wanna try it and I wanna show you and I have no problem spending money on that to be able to do that. And if brands feel like I am a good fit, they will find me. 
And if not, that's fine too. <laughs> but I totally like, I know that there is a bunch of people out there, I'm gonna use this shadow stick now in 31, that are so like fierce and just like go at it and just find brands all the time. And I just, every time I hear about that, I'm just like, oh, that is so fierce. But that's just not me. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just be here in my little spot in Sweden, just minding my own business, basically. I'm putting that duochrome light shade over, I think. It's a bit crumbly. Let me see if I can get a bit closer. I know that Anya in the video that I talked about had such a beautiful periwinkle inner corner and I just wanted to have that as well. I feel like the blue on my lid got so much darker than I wanted it to. Maybe I can put a bit more on. Did it just darken? I don't know what happened. I'll put a bit more on. Maybe something like that. I think that's really cool. Let me fix the other eye, let me do some liner and some mascara and all the boring stuff and we can come back and we can talk a bit more about, I don't know, all of these things. Okay, so that is the, that is the look. That is the look. <laughs> I am gonna use the Plumeria by Makeup Geek. I love these full spectrum liners. I only have one though, so I don't know if I love the others, but I love the formula of this one. And this is the perfect like burgundy plum matte color to have in your waterline when you want to like tie together a look like this one. I love this color. Oh, and I used the Makeup Geek product as well. Look at me, product placement. Not really. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't know who I am and that is perfectly fine, let's be honest here. I am a small YouTuber. I hope that this video doesn't come off like entitled. I am not expecting PR. I am actually shocked that I'm getting any PRs at all. I just wanted to sh like do a little story time with me talking about like how things really can work like behind 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 the screens behind the camera behind the <laughs> i have no idea what to say but just wanted to let you know like you can re reach out to brands and they can reject you and that is totally fine that is pretty much the bottom line of what i wanted to say i actually bought something i told you that i don't really buy lashes just on a whim but I made an exception for this one. This is Swede Lashes collaboration with Thomas Sekelius. Thomas Sekelius is a Swedish YouTuber. He is a... he's like the Manny MUA of Sweden, but without the drama. Such a sweet and talented guy that I have actually met a couple of times. He's such a sweet guy and he made lashes together with Swede Lashes, which is a Swedish lash company, but I do think that they ship internationally. I haven't opened these. Wait, let me look at the beautiful box. It's like yellow and this is this is by far the most like intense lashes that Sweet Lashes has ever made and that is basically the only reason why I haven't used Sweet Lashes here on my channel. It's because Sweet Lashes don't really do that dramatic lashes and I do love me a dramatic lash. How do you open this? Why is this not working out for me? Oh, here it goes. And you open the yellow box and the lashes are in here and they are so dramatic. Let me see if I can show you. Is it gonna focus on this? Yeah, you see they're like so whiskey but still spi somewhat spiky and so beautiful. So I'm gonna see, oh these are so nice and Swede has never done anything this dramatic and I'm so excited to try them on. And I think I'm gonna have to cut them a bit. Oh, they're so beautiful! Wow, that is <laughs> that is dramatic. Let me see if I can cut these a bit and I'll put them on. I'm just gonna let the glue like dry a bit before I put them on. Like I said, he has like he is a guy who wears makeup and his channel isn't mainly about makeup, it's more of a lifestyle vlogging channel but he does some makeup related videos he used to do more makeup related videos before but he is a bit of a star here in sweden i do think he has i don't know how many subscribers he has but it's way more than a hundred thousand which is a very big channel here in sweden i mean we only have 10 million inhabitants like there's the population of sweden is 10 million so if you have a hundred thousand when you're a swedish speaking channel that is a lot and i 
I, I think you get that as well. So I'm actually, I'm so proud of him for making this beautiful lash. Let me see if I can put it on and tell you how I feel about it. It's really pretty. I think I should have cut it a little bit longer though, like a bit more. But it's very intense. But it's really pretty. Let me put the other one on as well. Those are very dramatic though. Oh, and I got some. Uh. Anyways, let me fix my hair. I'm gonna blow dry it a bit and just fix it. <laughs> and I'll be right back and we can, I don't know, wrap this up. I don't even know what I was talking about. I'll be right back. Okay, so that is the finished look and I'm just, oh, I'm liking how my hair is so different. I, I've had pretty much every hair color there is, but I don't think I've had anything similar to this before and I'm actually quite liking it. And I know that this video was all over the place and I'm sorry if I came off entitled, I'm not. I'm just trying to just tell my experience and how I feel about PR and how I feel about my channel and how I feel about sponsorships. I just, I'm just, a normal person trying to find my way in this whole community and it is kind of hard actually and I got a kitty here now and <laughs> I just wanted to be like these are the brands that I actually contacted myself and how I handled the rejection <laughs> I feel like I'm handling it quite good because I have been shopping for all from all three of those brands and I'm not salty in any way shape or form and if anything opens up in the future from any brand that I am really interested in I will be super thrilled and if not I will still buy from them I think that PR is like a blessing and a curse because it's so nice to be able to get things and recognition from brands that you love but also it's PR is considered I don't know shady for, for some people and I don't really know why if you've been on my channel you would have known that I have I have uh, said my fair opinion fair negative opinion about quite a lot of things that I've received in PR so I have no problems like speaking my mind and I don't think that most brands have a problem with like youtubers or Instagrammers speaking their mind either here comes the doggo Aww. he was licking the cat I don't think she liked it. I don't think she liked it. Mm. Mm. So yeah, that, that's basically all I wanted to chat about. Chat about my experiences and how I feel about like sponsorships and PRs and also share some really fun... Oh, oh someone's yawning. Someone is joining and just let you know about some really weird companies that has contacted me in regards of a sponsorship that I just find hilarious, let's be honest. But yeah, I think that was everything. Do let me know how you feel about this down in the comments. I love having chats with you down in the comments about these kinds of things and it's a proper zoo right here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye!